Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and this is the second in the series of five videos for parents of children who have always struggled with their maths. In the first video, we looked at some of the physical reasons why children struggle to learn maths. And in this second video, we're gonna look in depth at the numbers to 10. We're gonna look at how to check whether your child has a sufficiently thorough understanding of those numbers to have firm foundations for their maths. So here are the 10 things you need to check about your child's understanding of the numbers to 10. Number one, can they fluently count up to 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Number two, can they fluently count down from 10? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. Number three, can they correctly select between one and 10 objects from a larger group of objects? Please, can you just go and get me three forks from the kitchen drawer? That kind of thing. Number four, if you show them a number of objects between one and 10, can they tell you how many objects there are? Number five, if you say a number between one and 10, can they show you that many fingers? Seven. They don't have to be super quick, but they should be able to do it. Number six, can your child name the number of fingers you're showing them? Number seven, if you show them a number to 10 in figures, can they name it? If you name a number to 10, can they write that number in figures? Seven. They don't have to be perfect at that. They might get the numbers back to front. But if they have got a big problem with that, it's really useful if you know about it. Number eight, can they complete additions within 10? That's additions where the answer is no more than 10. So if you say to your child, what is six add two, they should be able to puzzle out six with their fingers, add on another two and count up how many fingers they've got all together. It is absolutely fine for your children to be using fingers if they're struggling with maths, they should definitely be using fingers. And if you've ever told them off for using their fingers, apologize now, give them a big hug. They don't need to be super quick with those additions, but they do need to be able to figure them out. Number nine, can they complete subtraction from numbers up to 10? So for example, nine subtract two. If they can figure out nine fingers and knock off two of them, they should be able to puzzle out that the answer is seven. Again, they don't need to be speedy, they do need to be able to do it, and it's great if they're using their fingers. And finally, number 10 is where you find the missing number in an addition up to 10. Seven add what is 10? Seven add what is 10? Well, the total is 10. If you've got seven, what do you have to add on? And they should be able to puzzle that out. And as ever at this stage, they should definitely be using their fingers. You can see children need to be able to do a lot with the numbers to 10, but hopefully when you look at the list, it is just a common sense list. It's just that a lot of children fly through this and some are struggling and we need to take the time to slow down for those who are struggling and really work through it. I've created a worksheet with the 10 point checklist on and some calculations to help you check if your child can do these things. And if you want to download that, it's a free download from Facebook, from the Expert Primary Maths Teaching Facebook group. If you go to that group, go to the files section, you should find it there easily to download. If your child can do all these things, give them a big hug, give them loads of praise. And that's it for this video, you're done. You can click on the link to the next video about the numbers to 20. So what should you do if your child has got problems? Well, first of all, slow down, take time to acknowledge how much they have been struggling with their maths. In school, they've been pushed on to harder maths before they were ready, and it will have been really horrible for them. So just take time to acknowledge that and reassure them that it is gonna be different now. You're not gonna rush them on, we're gonna sort this out. So how are we gonna sort it out? Well, one of the best ways is to get going with playing some games with your child with small numbers in. These are my favorites. They're really quick, they're great games. They're actually based on the same concept, 
with this one you don't need to be able to read figures with this one you do because there is a spinner with the digits on your child needs to read At the end of it they collect up ladybird spots or bones in baskets and they need to count them up and that's really great for them really good fun games very quick if you have a set of dominoes dominoes is great if you play the game where you count up your pips at the end of the game because you end up combining small numbers to make 10 that's a very powerful thing to do there's a great card game you can play with your child if you've got a pack of cards now if your child is a bit older they might like some more mature games minecraft card game is great and ingenious another board game where you're counting tiles is fantastic something a bit more challenging they might like games with larger numbers in but just make sure that they are adding up small numbers often in that game that's what you're really looking for so that's tip one play games it might not work for your child if you know it won't work for your child don't sweat it try something else here's tip two there are all sorts of maths programs and series for young children i'm thinking about things like number jacks num tums number blocks that focus on the numbers up to 10 and on very simple mathematical concepts now the chances are that when your child was small they didn't really enjoy these programs because they weren't really getting them it's a lovely time now to find them on a streaming service or on youtube when your child is tired cuddle them in and just see if they want to watch them because if they are hitting the right points you might find that your child just really wants to watch them now they want to go through that journey of catching up and deeply understanding simple maths again that might not be right for your child but it's really helpful for quite a few now if you worked through that checklist and you found that your child only had a few gaps you might simply be able to work on them using your intuition and your common sense and sort them out and if you can that's great go for it get that done and then move on to the next video but what about if you need more help than that to puzzle out what to do well what you need to do is work out whereabouts in the numbers to 10 your child is starting to struggle are they fine with the smaller numbers but really struggling as they get up towards 10. I have some videos for teachers that explain in more detail about the teaching of different numbers and it's worth looking at those. So if your child is struggling with the numbers one to three, here's a video that explains the issues they may be struggling with in a lot more detail and how to work on them. If your child is stuck on the numbers four and five, then this is the video you want. If they start to struggle with the numbers six to eight, then here's a link to a video that will tell you more about teaching those particular numbers. And if they're struggling with the numbers nine or 10, this is the video you want. And of course you can come back and look at more than one of those videos. Another way forward at this stage is to email your child's school and tell them exactly what you've found when you've done this diagnosis and ask them for help. What do they think? What resources have they got that they can share with you? A lot of schools have electronic resources that they can share with you online if only they know what you're looking for and you ask. One of the companies that provides those resources is Maths Shed. And if you can't get what you're looking for through your school, they will let you subscribe. It's about 36 pounds, which is around 40 euros or 40 US dollars for 12 months subscription. And that will give you access to detailed PowerPoint lessons on every single topic in primary maths. And that includes the numbers to 10. There's lots of teaching ideas there. Obviously, PowerPoint isn't the best way to work with your children, but it gives you lots of ideas as to how to work with physical objects that are much better. If you know of other teaching resources that you find really useful that may be free online, please do leave links to them and comments about them in the comments on this video on YouTube. Now, if you're still struggling after all of that, I'm going to give you two more ways of getting help. One is to write a question in the comments to this video on YouTube. And the other is that if I get a thousand subscribers, I will live stream and take your questions in real time. So please subscribe to the channel. And when you click on subscribe and a bell appears, click on the bell and you'll get notifications about that. One last thing before I leave this video on the numbers to 10, 
if you're working with your child at this level, there is nothing to stop you looking at the videos on the numbers to 20 and the numbers to 100 as well. It's absolutely fine if your child would like that challenge of doing some harder maths as well to go ahead and work on those. Sometimes gaps with the earlier numbers are more easily filled by working on harder maths. But it's really important that you don't lose sight of where those gaps are and that you keep paying attention to them until they are properly sorted out. That's it for the second video in this series. Your takeaways from this video are that these are the 10 things your child needs to know about the numbers to 10 and that you need to puzzle out where their gaps are and work on them to fill them. That you should play games with your child if you can possibly engage them in games with small numbers. Keep those games short, it's much better. You're much more likely to be successful. Let them watch maths videos for young children like numtums or number blocks or number jacks if they want to do that. Snuggle them in when they're tired and just let them watch. Try to fill any gaps you identify just by asking sensible questions and working with them to fill those gaps. But if you can't, there's lots of resources available to help you and you can ask questions on this channel. When you're ready for it, the next video will teach you about two big ideas behind the numbers to 20 that every child needs to know before they're ready to fly with their maths. The video after that will show you how you need to work on the numbers to 100. And the final video will help your child become confident across the whole of maths. I just want to wish you all the best with your journey with your child's maths. You can do this. You've done two videos out of five already. You're getting there. And if you stick with it, it will make such a difference to their math skills, to their self-confidence and to their whole outlook in life. I really hope you sticking with this journey will bring you closer together and that you'll get through the bumpy bits and work them out. I do live in the real world of parenting as well as the real world of teaching and neither are ever smooth. One last favour to ask, if you like this video series, please share it with your friends or into social media groups where you know there would be other parents who might find it useful. We really want to fix as many children as we possibly can during this time when their parents can help. I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady. Have a really good day. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.